Hi students, welcome to another Mr. Ness Screencast. Today's aim is Hoover and Rugged Individualism. And here are your objectives. Please pause the video, look these questions over, and get ready to copy some vocab terms and take some notes. In the last two lessons, you saw how bad things got for Americans during the Great Depression. In cities and towns, nobody could find a job and many people lost all their savings when banks failed. And in the countryside of the Great Plains, farmers were devastated by the Dust Bowl. So things were really bad for a lot of Americans. When the Great Depression started in 1929, the president of the U.S. was this man, Herbert Hoover. Hoover was a fiscal conservative someone who believes that the government should collect few taxes and spend little money. In general, fiscal conservatives think that the government should play a small role in people's lives. So when the Great Depression struck, although many Americans wanted the federal government to help them by giving them food or money or jobs, Hoover disagreed. Hoover thought that people should help themselves and not turn to the government for assistance. And this belief that people should help themselves instead of relying on the government is known as rugged individualism. Rugged individualism is the idea that anyone can succeed if they work hard. It's a pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality. So even as millions of Americans became poor and unemployed during the Great Depression, Hoover told them to stay positive, work hard, and help each other. He defended his belief in rugged individualism in a speech that he gave in 1931. Let's look at what he says. This is not an issue as to whether the people are going hungry or cold in the United States. It is solely a question of the best method by which hunger and cold can be prevented. It is a question as to whether the American people on the one hand will maintain the spirit of charity and of mutual self-help through voluntary giving, as distinguished on the other hand from appropriations from the federal government. Once the federal government has stepped in, it is not the cost of a few millions, but we are faced with the abyss of reliance in the future upon government charity in some form or other. All right, let's break this down. Hoover says that Americans in poverty should, should turn to, quote, mutual self-help through voluntary giving. In other words, he's referring to charity. He then says that once the federal government starts spending money on helping people, those people will fall into the abyss of reliance upon the government. In other words, people will get lazy and rely on the government to help them instead of trying to help themselves. So Hoover supported rugged individualism, and as a result, while he was president, the federal government didn't do a lot to help Americans in poverty. What are your thoughts on rugged individualism? Do you agree with Hoover that if the federal government gives poor Americans things like food or money or jobs, that people will become dependent on that support and stop working hard for themselves? This question is, to being, is being debated right now as people argue over how much the government should support Americans who are facing the economic consequences of the pandemic. Take a moment to think about this question and how you would respond to it. Hoover's belief in rugged individualism was made clear in 1932 through his response to the Bonus Army. The Bonus Army was a group of World War I veterans from all across America who marched to Washington, D.C. asking for government assistance. Back in 1917, when World War I happened, these veterans had been promised a bonus or extra pay for their service in the military. But there was a catch. The government wouldn't pay them the bonus until 1945, so they had to wait. Throughout the 1920s, the veterans didn't mind waiting for their bonus because the economy was good and they had enough money. They weren't in any hurry to get paid. But when the Depression struck in 1929, the veterans became poor and were desperate for money. So they asked the federal government to pay them their bonus early. When Hoover refused, 17,000 veterans marched to Washington 
and they were called the Bonus Army. When the Bonus Army reached Washington, they pitched tents and set up a Hooverville near the Capitol building. You can see that in these pictures. Hoover's response to the Bonus Army clearly showed his belief in rugged individualism. Instead of helping the veterans by paying them their bonus, Hoover told them they needed to help themselves. He refused to pay the bonus and told them to leave Washington. And when the Bonus Army protested, Hoover sent in the military to force them to leave. The military burned the veterans' tents, shot and killed two of them, and injured 55 others. The army was forced to go home, angry and dejected. And this event made many Americans see Hoover as unkind and uncaring, and it set the stage for his eventual loss in the next election in 1932. You'll learn more about that election in the next lesson. And now it's time to review the objectives. If you don't know the answer to any of them, rewind the video and look again. I will see you in class. Bye, students.